guest is a man who will play his final game in the Marriott Center as a Cougar tomorrow night. His name is Matt Harms on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. But first, let's rewind to last night. Matt, and welcome to the program. There were fans in the stands, man. What was that like? Man, oh, that was that was awesome. Like, I, don't really, I don't really know how to describe it. Like, it was such a, a crazy feeling walking in there and just seeing fans. Um, it's just such a special experience. You know, you almost forget what it's like uh, after a year of just nobody in the stands. You know, we've had games with the scorekeepers with only fans or people there. So that was just so special. And it, it felt like you guys fed off of that, um, especially, uh, you know, during a stretch in the second half there. I, I recall a, a spot in the game as well where you blocked a shot and then you looked real tired going to the bench at like the under eight and you kind of waved your finger like, no, 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 Dikembe. And then when you came out, you kind of screamed like, all right, I got to get myself some juice. What what was going on in that sequence? Uh, Man, honestly, I was just, I was just going back to like, I was really tired, actually. Like, I walked out of there. I was like, wow, Utah really is tough to breathe. I just completely, somehow I completely forgot how tough to breathe it was here. So I walked out there. I was like, wow, this is something pretty tough. But I knew we had to go win that game. So I had to get myself some juice, whatever way, you know. Being tired is just an excuse. So I just had to fight through it and um, try to kind of use the crowd's energy, you know, trying to use their bench's energy, which is a lot easier, you know, when there's people in the stands. It's a lot easier to kind of regain your energy in that way. For sure. I, I, you know, I can relate to that, Matt. I mean, that's something that's been so interesting to watch this year is not having fans in the stands and not having that energy. But, um, hey, want to talk for a few minutes about Alex Barcelo, Caleb Lohner. Obviously, Alex had an incredible game last night, uh, seven threes. Can you talk about his leadership and, and then and Caleb's energy uh, coming in and his, his new role starting? Man, AB was just, Alex was just awesome yesterday night. Uh, you know, he's, the thing is, like, after the game, I wasn't surprised or I wasn't, like, too crazily impressed because I have such high expectations of him because I know what he's able to achieve. You know, I feel like he can do that on any given night. So I wasn't, you know, I wasn't like, oh, my goodness, like, he, he's really doing this. I feel like every shot that he takes is going to go in. That's how much confidence I have in him when he shoots the ball. You know, seven for seven to me doesn't seem like all that crazy because I see him put the work in. I see him put the work in every single day after practice. I see him get shots up during practice, you know, in live scrimmages, that kind of stuff. So I, I believe in him 100%. You know, when he was shooting, beginning of the season, when he was shooting 60% from three, that didn't seem crazy to me. Uh, you know, it's just, I have so much trust in him. So I'm super happy that he had a great night, of course, but I, he's going to have many more. And then Caleb Loner, man, he's just been, he's just been freaking unbelievable. You know, just for him to slot into the starting lineup and, you know, start, Outputting the production that he has been uh, is really special. Uh, I'm really proud of him. You know, just for a freshman to come out, it's crazy. I was actually talking about this with AB. I was like, you know, in, in any other conference in the country, uh, you probably just pencil him in as freshman of the year. He's got a really tough, you know, he's got a really tough competitor in, uh, in Jalen Suggs in the WCC. But man, every other conference needs to be a pencil in for the freshman of the year. He's just such a physical presence already, even as a freshman. We should just give him that award. We should just say Jalen Suggs is the name of the award. You win. Caleb Lohner has won the Jalen Suggs Freshman of the Year. I, I say we do this. I think that'd be fair, right? <laughs> okay, riddle me this. Maybe, maybe, maybe I didn't consider. <laughs> You're roommates with AB, right? Yes. Is he in, in the apartment right now? I think he is. Uh, I think he's still asleep. I haven't heard any movies. Always, Always still asleep. Oh, maybe this would be even better. Everyone's still sleeping there, Jerem. Here, here's what I, yeah. Coming off a big win, let yeah. him rest. Here, here's what I was going to ask you to do, but now that I know he's asleep, I was going to have you yell, AB was unbelievable! <laughs> but I don't want to wake him up. We probably shouldn't, right? Yeah, we probably shouldn't. Okay. need his rest. Okay. Uh, question. You're 7'3". Do you have to get a custom bed so your feet don't hang over the edge? No, I have my feet hang over the edge. <laughs> regardless of what bet I have. I've been <laughs> it doesn't I've been matter. That's from twins to kings. They don't get longer. They only get wider. Ah, it's very, that stinks. It's very disrespectful. So yeah, like, it's awful. do you like have to have your feet covered or are you cool with them just like hanging out there? Uh, I just, I just have them hanging out. Honestly, it's weird when my feet do fit on a bed. Like I've tried the diagonal thing on a king. Yeah. It just feels weird, especially when my feet are under covers. So it just feels, it feels wrong after years, after <laughs> Probably seven years of my feet hanging off the bed. It's just something that happens now. 
That's funny, man. Okay, uh, we're talking to Matt Harms. Uh, obviously, big win against San Francisco. Team rankings now says, hey, BYU, 100% in the dance. No guarantees, right? But you guys feel pretty comfortable about getting in at this point. It's just about seeding. And now you have St. Mary's come in. This, this is a big rival in the conference uh, and senior night. So a lot is going into tomorrow's game. How do you feel about it? Um, you know, I feel really confident, uh, as I've done all year, you know, this team is just special. Um, we get better every single day, um, which is just something you don't see from a lot of teams. You know, it's, um, I was actually looking at, um, kind of how Michigan state's been doing these past couple of games. You know, they've got some really big wins over top five opponents. And I feel like they always do that every single year. And that's always a team to look up to in their way. They make progress during the year. Uh, and I feel like we've made similar strides. You know, after each of our losses, we've kind of used those um, in a way that I don't think a lot of teams would be able to use them. You know, we go in, we actually really learn. And then, you know, we've kind of had some time after both our losses where we can really reflect, uh, um, where we can really reflect, uh, specifically referring to our loss against Gonzaga, where we can really reflect on what we need to do better and where we need to really improve as a team. Um, so we've just taken that to heart, you know, those days after that second Gonzaga loss, we came together as a team, really trying to get better. So that's just, I am super excited. I'm super confident. Yeah, Matt, that's been really impressive to me all year is just this team's ability to stay in the moment, stay locked in game by game and get better. You know, I've played on lots of teams where guys start checking out, especially at this time of the year, you know guys uh, start going off on tangents and start thinking about next year or what's to come after. How are, how have you guys been able to stay so locked in to, to the moment and, and play each game one by one? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would credit that 100% to the coaching staff, uh, you know, just the way they've kept us in there, you know, the way they're keeping us engaged every single day. Uh, that's really important. You know, like you said, there's always guys that, you know, um, start having those thoughts, start having issues during, like at the end of the year, that's when you see a lot of teams drop games they shouldn't be. Um, so, you know, I think the staff has done such a great job of just keeping us engaged. Coach Pope talks about it every single day um, about being there for this team, being present and being in the moment. Uh, you know, not a lot of teams get to experience what we're going to experience. You know, going to the NCAA tournament is really special. Uh, so we got to make sure we don't do anything to mess that up because that's a special experience. Matt, uh, I'm not sure what your experience you expected it to be like here at BYU, but it's been a special year, no doubt. Um, how is it compared to what you thought it might be? It's lived up to every single expectation. You know, I'm just super, super excited about the, where the team is now. You know, I had full confidence that when I came here that we were going to be an NCAA tournament team. You know, I wasn't going to come here to lose. Um, so I knew, you know, I knew that when I committed, I was a winning basketball player. And I was joining a team full of other winning basketball players. And then, you know, once I, uh, once I got on campus, even after that, we added even more winning basketball players. We added Brandon, Brandon Averett. We added Caleb, Caleb Lohner. So I just knew, I just immediately saw how hard these coaches worked every single day for us. And I just knew we were going to have a winning season. So, you know, my expectations are not met yet because we got to, you know, we got to make a run in this tournament. But um, they're on their way to all being met once if the season keeps going the way it is. So, yeah, Matt, let's talk about that. So, you you've been on some teams that have gone deep into the NCAA tournament, won really, really big games. Elite Eight and Sweet 16. Elite Eight, Sweet 16 at, at Purdue. So how does this team compare? What are some parallels to, to this BYU team and, and those BYU or those Purdue teams that you played on? Uh, I would say, you know, nothing to discredit this team, but I think this team might not be as talented as some of those, some of those teams but we're just grittier, you know, we're just really gritty. And we've had games that we just refused to lose. Um, you know, at Purdue, I was on teams that were just straight up better than everybody else. Uh, and here, I feel like we're just unwilling to lose sometimes. Like, I, I would, you know, that first road trip we had uh, against San Francisco and St. Mary's, I would look at that as probably the prime example of that. We're down four, six, eight. And then at some point, we just say no. And we just win. We go and win the game just because we're unwilling to lose. We just want to do everything to get that win. Um, you know, I've been on some great teams at Purdue, uh, teams that were built extremely differently year to year. Um, but just this just grit and toughness is not something you see a whole lot. Um, but it's something that you do see on winning teams. 
And when you talk about the dynamic of this team, it's interesting because it's BYU's best defensive team since 2008, uh, according to Ken Palm. And then the fact that BYU is 10 deep right now is pretty incredible. So how do those favor BYU in terms of a matchup in the NCAA tournament and the ability to win that first game? Because BYU traditionally has gone into the tourney, and uh, it's typically been chalk. And right now this team's probably in like an 8-9 game, hopefully up to like a 7-10. But uh, – defensively and with the depth, how does that, how does that give an advantage to BYU perhaps in a game like that? Uh, you know, it's once you get to the tournament, anything can happen. Uh, you know, I've, I've been in crazy games as the, as the five against the 12 or the four against the 13. Um, so anything can happen once you get to the tournament, but I believe in this team, you know, like going as deep as we do is not something you see a lot. Just being able to bring guy after guy off the bench that can actually really contribute. Um, you know, I don't think any team is bringing guys off the bench at a quality that we are. Um, so that's something that's really going to be good for this team going into March. You know, it's tough to prepare for 10 guys coming out there. Um, so I really believe that is going to be a huge credit to this team. It's going to be really important for us going forward, you know, to see that every uh, every game, our bench outscores their bench and has more, any just plays harder than their bench. I think that's really important. And it's something we've seen all year. If that continues, I think we have a great shot in March. Matt, so your your journey, your basketball journey is so interesting to me. You've you've been all over the world, uh, been a part of a really good club in Spain. Um, come to Purdue, you know, come to BYU. Tomorrow's senior night. Um, you it seems like you've come into into Provo, embraced BYU, embraced the culture here. Uh, what what does BYU mean to you in, in your basketball journey? Well, I mean, it just kind of meant an opportunity for me. You know, when I was when I was down last year and I was I just felt like I was really struggling and I just needed somewhere new to go. BYU was an opportunity for me and it became just some a place that has embraced me more than I have embraced it. You know, I just the people here have been so welcoming to me and so special that, you know, I was in a I was in a in a bad place mentally last year when I was transferred. You know, it's a really it was a really tough decision to make. Uh but now coming here it's just Every single day I've been happier than the previous one. You know, just the people here have been amazing. That everyone associated with the basketball program has been just simply just awesome. Um, there's nothing more I could have asked for. You know, I'm so happy to be here. Tomorrow's going to be an emotional night for me, you know, because this is a place that when I was at my lowest, I came here and they picked me up and raised me up and um, allowed me to be a part of a special team. So I'm just extremely grateful for that. Well, it's been awesome to have you on the team, and certainly there's some big uh, wins to be had, including tomorrow night against uh, St. Mary's. So congratulations on the season so far. Enjoy tomorrow night with uh, about 2,000 fans in the stands. And, uh, Matt, we appreciate the time, man. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me. Okay, that was Matt Harms, whose feet always dangle off the edge of the bed on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Deseret First, you know why, we show how.